Every year, as it gets colder, North American monarch butterflies migrate south between August and October. Monarchs that spend the summer breeding west of the Rocky Mountains tend to migrate to California coasts, while monarchs breeding in the east migrate to Mexico, traveling up to 4,500 kilometers. The butterflies cluster together in large groups during the winter to survive the cold. Once spring begins, they migrate north to start the breeding season all over again. Monarchs that migrate north will breed and pass away long before their descendants are ready to migrate south again. None of the monarchs on the south migration path have ever been to their destination before, and yet they know exactly where to go. Scientists believe they use cues like magnetism and sunlight to navigate directionally, but the rest is still a mystery. The monarchs that migrate south are the last of four or more generations born each year, and they live up to eight months longer than their ancestors from earlier in the summer. In February, I took the trip of a lifetime to a nature reserve in Mexico where eastern monarch butterflies spend the winter. For our group of 15, getting to the monarch's wintering grounds in the volcanic mountains of central southern Mexico involved four hours on a bus from Mexico City, half an hour up steep dirt roads in the backs of open air trucks, half an hour on horses led by locals, and finally, 45 minutes hiking up the last 600 feet of elevation to their current location at 11,100 feet above sea level. Here, on the limbs and branches of specific species of trees, they rest, mostly in large groups, some individually. Most appear immobile and blend in with the woods, as we only see the gray undersides of their wings. The masses of butterflies are heavy, the branches rock gently as a few take off or land. When they fly, they flash beautiful orange, black, and white wings. That are a bit worse for wear, having flown some 4,500 kilometers to get here. Amazed by the sheer number of butterflies, I found myself wondering did any of these magical creatures get their start in my yard in New Hampshire, in the northeastern United States? Several years ago, I was given some special plants which monarch caterpillars are known to survive on exclusively, called milkweed. I'm not good with plants and thought I had killed them off, but last summer they came up again, and on my two thin stalks I found four healthy monarch caterpillars. I never found their chrysalises, but six months later, in the mountains of Mexico, as I stared at the monarchs lazily flapping their wings on the trees, I wished I could get a glimpse of recognition that would tell me that my monarchs had survived to adulthood. And arrive safe and sound in Mexico. Now, in May, the children of those monarchs are working their way north. My milkweed has just emerged from the soil, getting ready for their arrival this summer. This time, though, I will know that a few generations ago, their ancestors and I were in the same place, and I may have looked at their great 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 grandparents.